what is going on guys it is dan here and we are back with from the depths so instead of doing uh, some more uh combat in battles in today's episode we are going to be doing something that i've received several requests for and that is to do um a tutorial series on how to go about building uh land vehicles so considering i don't think there's really anything out there on how to do it i feel like it'd probably be uh, great for all of you guys for me to go ahead and try to do something like that. So uh, in today's episode, we are going to cover the very, very basics of how to get your tank set up to move around. Uh, the previous two episodes I did on this kind of stuff, they weren't really uh, focused on any one thing in particular. So I guess a couple people maybe were, were lost behind what I was trying to do. So we are going to start from the very beginning of the process. So, we're going to go ahead and create just a basic hull. Again, it doesn't have to be anything too fancy, but by the end of this uh, tutorial series, we'll hopefully have uh, something that's actually formidable in fighting. Actually, that's probably if we do that. Alright, so one of the main things I like to do when building tanks is I like to figure out what kind of uh, turret I'm going to be building before I even start building a hull. So if I want to build a very strong turret, I want the, the actual tank to be long and wide. Uh, in this vehicle, I think we're going to go for more of a medium tank design. So uh, we're going to not really focus on uh, the turret as much as we might do with a heavy tank or a tank destroyer style uh, vehicle. So now that we kind of have this set up. I'm just going to put a little bit of armor on the sides just so that way you guys can get a feel for how we're going to go about doing this. Now, for the propulsion, uh, we use wheels. So if you want to get to the wheels, you go to your build menu and you go to air. Don't ask me why they're in air. I don't know. But we are looking for the two things over here on the far right. Real wheel power and wheel turning. Wheel power is responsible for giving your vehicle propulsion. These are important for getting your vehicle moving, first off. Uh, so, you, the more of these you have, the faster your vehicle is going to be able to go, and the faster your vehicle is going to accelerate. So, the less you have, the less power it's going to use, but it's, you know, obviously going to slow you down. So, we're going to go ahead and grab some of these. And we're, oh, nope, we're putting them on wrong. Now, this is something you also need to pay very important attention to. If they were, for instance, like they were like this, they're inverted, which means these are going to actually be going backwards, which is not a good design for a tank. So we're going to make sure that this little wooden panel thing uh, is up against our armor. And we're going to just go ahead and put some along the sides. Now, you don't necessarily have to do it the way I'm doing it. I just do this because it makes it look vaguely like tank treads even though it kind of looks stupid, but you know, whatever, whatever, you know. Uh, so that is the basics of the propulsion. Now for taking care of turning, we need to use the wheel with the turning designation. So this vehicle, this part does not use power and it does not provide propulsion. It just merely provides a steering mechanism for the vehicle. Without this, the vehicle could only go in a straight line. So we definitely want some of these. And I, I tend to use two on what I would consider a more uh, flexible vehicle. If you're going for um, a vehicle that you don't really want moving around too much and you just kind of want it to stick in a straight line as much as possible, one is probably your better op um, option. I just kind of go with two for the most part. Now, you might be interested in putting them in the back, but what I've noticed with doing that is it kind of makes the vehicle very floaty and sometimes it has issues with, I don't know, shooting around all over the place when you don't want it to which again isn't probably the best thing for uh, a tank so next thing we're going to be looking for is actual controls for our vehicle so in the build menu we go to go controls that sentence did not come out of my mouth right in the build menu menu you go to control here you want to look for the vehicle controller so this is going to control basically all of your vehicles um now this 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 would be for uh, manual control, but we're gonna go ahead and grab it, and you want to make sure that this arrow on the top is facing towards the front of your vehicle. Uh, if you don't know which way the front of your vehicle is, 
if we uh, oh wait we can't really see it okay on this uh, thing in the center of the screen where it says mass it has sort of um, okay actually this is a better way of showing it as you can see at the base of our uh, metal beam rectangle that we're using right now uh, you can see an arrow pointing in that direction that designates the front of the vehicle so if the arrow for instance was facing this direction obviously you're building it the wrong way okay so we're gonna actually put this back and we're gonna go back to control I'm gonna grab our vehicle controller so arrow faces towards front of vehicle and we're gonna put that down and what I usually do is I just grab a chair and I put that behind there so whenever we spawn on our vehicle it automatically puts us at the control wheel now the next major thing for this is going to be to install some kind of engine because currently as you can see in the bottom right we have zero out of zero horsepower so this vehicle if we were to just stop right now and hop on board as you can see our water drive on the side which doesn't really have anything to do with this but it is responsible for uh, the propulsion that our vehicle is having at this current time so one is um, basically full throttle and then it decreases from there back down to zero so as you can see our vehicle is not moving we don't have fuel we don't have engine power so we need to go ahead and install those so if we go back to build and I'm gonna go ahead and put mirror back on because that's kind of important for building and we are going to go ahead and go to fuel engines now I've also had questions about what kind of engine should be used for building tanks with the volume limit it's kind of not really in anyone's best interest to build uh, electric engines just because they take up too much space and they really don't have the uh, power output that we're looking for so here we're just gonna have a simple engine so we're gonna have uh, a fuel engine generator and two crankshafts and then on either side of these crankshafts we're going to put down cylinders and then we're going to put some on, on the top over here we're going to get a radiator and we're going to hook that up to the crankshaft so this will help cool everything down uh, and prevent it from overheating now you could use injectors to conserve some space and increase um, engine output but the issue is is that these also burn through fuel quite quickly and considering we have volume limited vehicles and all that fun stuff having a refinery and all of that having vehicles that burn through a lot of fuel is not necessarily the best interest but for the purpose of this video we're just going to go ahead and use injectors now these things also have a bit of an issue with causing things to overheat i don't know if this particular setup is going to cause that problem but we're going to find out so the next thing we want to grab is in, under resources we're going to go and we're going to grab uh, fuel storage and you could select whatever you want in here we're just going to go for two because it fits right there and stuff so that is basically all we need to get this vehicle moving so if we go out of build mode and we hold down our t key as you can see our vehicle is rocketing off at 52.2 meters a second and we look at our cylinders they are heating up this is to be expected but considering we're producing over 2,000 horsepower with that little itty bitty engine that, that's pretty respectable so you could probably fit some more uh, radiators on it so that is kind of the basics of how to go about building your propulsion and how to get the vehicle moving what we're going to just cover really quickly is we're going to quickly uh First off, we're going to stop our vehicle because we don't want it shooting off into the hills and ending up in space with how fast it's going. We're just going to go and get our AI real quick. So under AI, we're just going to grab a mainframe. We're going to put that down and we're going to get a card slot and put one of those down. And what we're going to grab is the land AI. And we're going to just attach that to the card slot, which in turn connects it to the mainframe. And we're just going to run down through the basic inputs inside of the land AI card. Uh, we're going to kind of familiarize ourselves with them so that way in the next tutorial uh, we can set it up properly and we can get onto the more fun stuff with uh, adding armor and kind of personalizing how we want this vehicle to look. 
So inside here, we have a bunch of numbers and sliders and all that fun stuff, which may look daunting at first, but once you kind of read for how these things are used, it, it kind of makes more sense. So uh, enter broadside below this range. These two work hand in hand. So if we were to drag the bottom one, nothing really happens, but if we grab the top one, it brings both of them along. And same goes if we grab the, the, uh, the top one, we move it down. But if we grab this one, it moves it around as well. So what we typically want to do is we want these numbers to be reasonably high if we're going for um, more of a brawling vehicle. If we want this vehicle to kind of stay back as much as possible, we drag this all the way back. So that's kind of the basics of how you want that. Basically, if the range is... If the range is greater than this number, we return and we go back into broadside. If the range is greater than this number, we leave broadside. Uh, nominal broadside angle just means what direction we want the vehicle facing. So currently it is going to be broadsiding at a 75 degree angle to the enemy. I typically put this at zero so that way our vehicles always have the thickest frontal armor pointing directly at the enemy. Uh, minimum broadside range basically at which point is the vehicle going to end its broadsiding and make for the edge of its radius again. So the lower we set this number, the closer the vehicle is going to get before it decides to uh, turn around. So again, for long distance vehicles, you want this number up pretty high. Uh, idle approach distance. I don't really mess with this thing. I don't know really what it does. I just typically leave it at 50 and everything works fine. So that's good. Turning circle makes about as much sense as it states. The lower the number, the faster your vehicle is going to turn in a circle. So with the two uh, wheel turning uh, setup that we have, you can typically put this number all the way down at the bottom and it turns just fine. Depth permitted. Uh, it, it's just how deep water can go into. That sentence didn't make sense either. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. Cease movement is basically at what distance from the enemy is it going to just stop and fire. And once this uh, range goes um, past the limit that we've set, the vehicle will automatically go back into combat. Well, I mean, it'll still be in combat, but it won't be moving around. And then one of the more important things for if you're building uh, a fixed gun uh, type of vehicle is disable reverse. So basically, this prevents the vehicle from being able to... Uh, turn around well prevents the vehicle from being able to drive backwards which if you have a gun facing forwards and it can't turn around that's kind of annoying if you're the the rear of your tank is constantly backing up into enemies so we usually uncheck that unless you've got a turret and down here it just kind of explains in words how all of these things put together so that is kind of the the basics of how to go about building uh, your chassis and uh, all the basic movement components. Uh, in the next episode, we're probably going to get onto armoring the vehicle, setting up our AI, and uh, perhaps doing some other things that you might have suggested in the comment section down below. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you've got suggestions for future tutorials, or you just want to let me know if there's anything I need to change, or if you just like this content, um, you know, leave it in the comment section down below. You like the video, you want to see more, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.